All right, so uh, we are honored to be joined by uh, Dani Chalutz. He was the, the commander of the Israeli Air Force, chief of staff, fought in the Six-Day War, the Yom Kippur War, and uh, many, many other operations. Uh, you have a, a huge and vast experience in defending the Jewish people. One of the last things that you did uh, was oversee the killing of the terrorist uh, Ahmed Yassin. And uh, I guess my question to you is, especially, uh, you know, watching uh, about the Eichmann trial, etc. Uh, to what extent do you see the role of the state of Israel as defending itself? And when, if ever, does it take action in terms of historical justice or even revenge? Uh, I think the Eichmann trial was definitely one of those uh, moments that gave a lot of Jews closure and a feeling that some justice is done. And as a people who suffered so much injustice, to what extent does Israel uh, uh, take those actions? Well, I would say that only those who fought for, uh, for the country, for our country, understand the meaning of using force, of sending people that might be killed in war. And we value life more than average. Mm -hmm. because we know the meaning of losing life. Israel is a, so far, is a democratic state. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have any, any need to take revenge. Mm -hmm. We are not a terror organization. Mm -hmm. We are not uh, uh, criminals that are taking revenge Mm -hmm. I instead of I. Yeah, but uh, no, for example, uh, the U.S. Uh, killing Osama bin Laden. I don't think uh, that was just a petty act of revenge. It was an uh, act of, uh, you know, a country does uh, execute justice. Yeah, uh, executing justice is, is completely different from revenge. And uh, when we uh, targeted uh, Yassin uh, 18 years ago, mm -hmm. it wasn't a revenge. It was based on the knowledge that we had those days mm -hmm. what this person might do by mm -hmm. sending his terrorists to terrorize us. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a revenge, it was a prevention. Mm -hmm. We prevented the future terror attacks of this organization, of this mm -hmm. specific Hamas leader. The same goes all over. Mm -hmm. We are not looking for revenge. We are looking for, first of all, being able to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't want we don't want anyone to fight for us. Mm -hmm. We want only us to defend our country mm -hmm. first. Second, there are some cases that we we'll, we will prefer to act in a coalition with allies. And as you know, our main ally is U.S. Mm -hmm. And the United States is supporting us with, with weapon systems. Mm -hmm. We are sharing information mm -hmm. on, on mutual interest. And, uh, but generally speaking, I want to be sure that on a daily basis, we can do everything by ourselves. And we are, we are proving it on a daily basis that we are doing everything on ourselves, uh, knowing that we are paying price, but, but it's better to pay our own price than others will pay for us, and then we owe them something. Mm -hmm. I don't want to owe to anyone anything. Mm -hmm. You were uh, chief of staff and uh, commander of the Air Force. I'm sure you know a lot about Iran, and your father is from Iran, if I uh, saw correctly. Uh, does what's happening now in Iran in terms of the protests, uh, does that change your view of geopolitics, security, uh, and your view of the Iranian country right now? Uh, right now, no. No change. I believe that uh, this regime understands that he's going to lose the third generation, not the second generation. Mm -hmm. the third one, the youngsters in Iran. Mm -hmm. they are, the Iranian people are very smart people. They are knowledgeable. They are very highly educated. They have a lot of knowledge. And they are looking for more freedom, more liberalism, etc. 
I believe that this this uh, uh, rise that happened in the last in the last four months already five months are a kind of a signal to the regime. But unfortunately, the regime is taking this signal uh, as a as a red light, and they are using a lot of force to depress them. They will pay the price for that, but not immediately. On the long run, on the long run, when the first generation, those who created the, the Islamic Revolution in Iran, will disappear, we will we might see a change. Mm-hmm. When it will happen, I really don't want to estimate because it's difficult for me to estimate uh, in this case and to throw numbers is not not smart but I believe that process wise uh, the third generation is is the hope for Iran those and, youngsters who are attending universities right now etc and do you see this changing anything in terms of Israel's security apparatus uh preparedness uh hope you know we have to be prepared uh, just in case the iranian will reach a nuclear uh, capability uh, that's on one hand to be prepared always to be ready to react always to initiate something that's a big question uh, i would say that this uh, this threat is not a threat to Israel by itself. Uh, it's a threat to the, 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 the Western community as a whole and mm-hmm. to their close neighbors as well. All the, all the, the Sunni Sunni mm-hmm. uh, countries in the Gulf, for example, mm-hmm. uh, Saudi Arabia, Emirates, etc., are exposed to the same threat as Israel. Uh, but I, I want <laughs> to believe that even this extremist, reg- extremist regime in Iran is still rational. And I think that the Iranians presented that they are rational in a way. Uh, of course, when, when, when worse comes to worse, I don't, I don't know what to expect. So we have to be prepared. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe that... Uh, our preparation will give us good answers mm-hmm. to the extreme situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, if you can speak directly to the people in Iran, the people protesting the regime violence, what do you say to them as someone who uh, uh, whose family has deep roots in Iran? Uh, do you have a, a message for them? I really, I really appreciate those people that are risking their life for their belief. And uh, their belief is, is nothing special. They want to, to live in peaceful country. They want to live in a liberal and open country. Mm-hmm. They want they don't want to be suppressed. So I, I really I really admire them mm-hmm. uh, because they have the courage. And courage is something that you cannot buy in the market. Either you have it or not. And those who are courageous enough, up to the point that they are ready to pay with their life for what they believe in, are really sh- should be admired. I'm not asking them to provoke against this uh, unsane regime that they are under, because uh, I'm afraid that they can be very brutal in suppressing the, the riots, etc. But I do encourage them to continue believing that the future will be better and doing all the things that they can do without risking their life. Wow. Uh, because I don't think that someone should pay for with his life for something which is unachievable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if he feels it's achievable, maybe the risk for his life is lower. So uh, I really will encourage them to continue to believe that the future will be brighter and to do all the things they can do 
without taking the personal risk on themselves. Well, all right. Israeli uh, Chief of Staff, Commander of the Air Force, thank you for being with me. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. And uh, let's hope uh, for better things for the people of the entire region. Uh, for, uh, you Absolutely. Know, Absolutely. Thank uh, you, Rabbi Hanan. Thank you.